Hi, and welcome back to the channel. This video is the last of the MACE recordings. It is a compilation of the two Q&A sessions that I had from the two mini painting sessions. Thanks to those who asked the questions, they're absolutely wonderful. For those of you watching, please make sure to watch the whole thing. There's some really fantastic questions that were asked. And again, if you have any further questions, you can always ask me down below. For now, let's get started. Yeah, Do you fun. have preferred brands of paint or just apple butter? I apple butter, apple, 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 apple barrel. Apple, apple butter is good on toast. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, I use all sorts of paints simply because I find certain ones work a little bit better. So uh, Americana paints are good for this too. Yeah, um, I do use mini paints. Um, I've used Vallejo paints. I love the Vallejo paints for their colors, especially for more intense colors. They're great for that. My favorite washes are absolutely Citadel washes. I find they have the best consistency, the best distribution, and they kind of are my go-to dependables. Um, Army Painter washes, however, in terms of flesh tones, those I find the best because they actually stay matte, whereas the Citadel washes can have a tendency to go a little glossy on you. So really, my rule of thumb is try everything out, sure. see what works for you. ways to so a lot of times you'll get pieces and a oh you mean the sword that's like this that. yeah <laughs> i've tried running hot water over them and then holding it in place and running cold water it's worked a little bit but i think i need hotter water to start with yeah honestly i've had the most success with going the old-fashioned route of get a small pot of water and you want a full-on rolling boil as if you're about to make pasta okay get that going get a pair of metal tongs <laughs> Do not use your own hands to drop it in, um, but you're going to take a pair of metal tongs, you're going to drop your mini in, and I usually do about a count of 50 seconds. Pull it out, dunk it into ice water, and by ice water I mean you have crushed ice in that water. Get it in the water, and the water will be cool enough where you should be able to hold whatever is bent in an odd position and hold that while it gets the mini to reshape itself back to what it should be. Okay. okay, so actually hold it in the wa ice water and, and do the correcting there. Yeah, okay. do the correcting in the water as you hold it. With the tongs. With, no, okay. actually, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the hot water tongs, the cold water fingertips. Um, that usually does the trick for me. Now, unfortunately, whoops, let's stay close. Um, unfortunately, there are those times where a mini's sword or spear, spear or arm, uh, they, it's almost like the memory's been set because they've been in the box for so long. If it's something like that, then you may want to look into exploring. I can't show you here because it's so detailed. You may want to look into exploring kit bashing and doing something called pinning. Put the heat on on purpose because that usually helps. That's the other thing. If you're really in a rush and you want your pin your minis to dry faster, hair dryer. But keep that hair dryer to a low heat. All right. If you do a higher heat blow dryer, you're you're going to do fun things to the plastics, especially. <laughs> And you also do fun things to the paints because the paints have a plastic quality to them as well, so oh, things will start to high. crack and scream. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't. don't. Uh, yeah, that's once, a whole once, different once issue. You, once you blow the hair dryer, the fumes are going to go everywhere. Yeah, right. Um, but that's a little trick. Or if you have forced air right now, you can always put your uh, mini next to your forced air heat, and that. I mean, I actually have something rigged in our basement because we have a vent down there. And it's this little tray that hangs from the vent area, and I'll just stack my minis in there, and like that a, way it's like, like a fume like yep. hood. Yep, yep uh, it works out air, beautifully. My airbrush. In class, how do you attach them? You can have you have a couple ways you can attach them. Um, I will use E6000. I will also use the trick of using super glue and baking soda um, because that makes it catch right away. And it's actually what they use on acrylic nails. So it's something I've been using for a very long time and I thought it was a mini technique. I'm like, well, that makes sense. But basically what you do is you'll put some super glue onto the mini's feet. You sprinkle a little bit of very thin coat of baking soda onto your face. You will then put your mini on top of the baking soda and it's going to make the glue bond to it faster. It's a quick chemical and reaction. You just blow off the yep, and then you just blow off the rest. You can take a paintbrush and just kind of brush off the dry. Ooh. Sometimes it helps just to put a little bit of extra super glue around the feet once you have it, have it attached to really make sure that bond's there. 
but that's something I like to do to attach minis to bases. Um, when you are painting the dwarves, uh, they are right now tacked on with just hot glue. So if you want to get your mini tacked on and not have it be permanent, low temp hot glue gun, just put a little dollop on the bottom of their feet, stick it onto a plastic base, and what you're going to find is when you're done, it's just a light pressure with your thumb and it pops right off. And okay. plastic minis on plastic bases. Mm -hmm. I know metal you can do it at all times. Yeah, it works, it's, but it has to be low temp hot glue. That's the trick. If you're using your industrial high temp, oh no. No, you've, you've melted, melted it you've together. Melted, yeah, exactly. You've That's melted so them plastic, together. It's fused. fused together. It's like, so no, always make sure it's low temp when you're doing that little trick if you just want to make sure your mini's staying in place. Right? No, I like to make it so that um, when you're first learning how to paint minis, it's not something that comes off as intimidating or I don't know if I can do it because there are some very talented people out there. I definitely recommend you go onto YouTube and check out the guys who are using the airbrushes. The women who can get those absolutely bizarre fine details that boggle the mind. Um, but what I want you guys to walk away with today is the ability to feel like you can paint a mini, you can paint it quickly because you need it on the table in five hours type of deal. All right. Oh, of course not. And I do get asked that a lot. It's like, well, how do I get my partner, my wife, my friend into painting minis? And I think a lot of what happens with painting minis is because they're small by nature of name, uh, people get intimidated by it. So if you really want to try and get someone into painting minis, start them with a base like this, start them with a larger mini, because then it's not so terrifying to be like, I'm supposed to get paint where and how, uh, you know, scale it up a little bit, and then it helps them learn the techniques while getting a feel for how the paint's going to react to the plastic. The, uh, there's a particular project I want, I'm wanting to look at as minis yeah. for my little site. Mm -hmm. And the, the the painting guide, they look like toys. Like they're they're fully colored. Like it look they look like toys. And I have and the minis look like toys. Right. But the paint job is all solid color. How do you? Is, that doesn't seem like it's this. Right. So is that just different? Different. There style? there are different approaches to how people want the overall effect. You get more of the the trend where it's almost like it's anime. Right. No. Yeah. These, yeah. It's, yeah. So you get minis that have more like the very bright, vibrant colors to them and not right. so much of the detail work. Um, but it's also a kid's game. So yeah, it's not exactly. Be, and that's just it. Right. Like kids love bright, solid colors. Right. So right. It's, it's catering to the audience sure. in that respect. It doesn't does, mean you can't go back in. Does this method work for that stuff? Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Um, I actually have a few everything we've been doing yeah. has been like, just go light over the highlights and stuff. And yep. now this looks like... This is red. Yep. Like, yeah. Okay. You can absolutely do that. In fact, I have a few videos showing you how you can enhance your minis. Okay. Uh, so if you want to take it from a very flat, basic color scheme. Right. And you put styles on the clothes and stuff. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. You can absolutely do that. Um, brushes that you recommend? Um, that's a good question. You, When you're working with minis like this, um, you can get higher quality brushes. The ones I have gotten from Vallejo, those are good brushes. I like those as well. Um, I, I will sometimes just go out and buy the cheap ones from like Michaels or Walmart, but those are for minis that have a lot more texture to them because sometimes just having a rougher texture will sometimes wear on the brush a little bit more. Uh, so it's one of those things where if you're going to invest in a good paintbrush for your mini, make sure you have a set of good paintbrushes that you're dedicating to the minis that don't have a whole bunch of rough texture on them, that you're really dealing more with metals and fabrics and things like that. Uh, save those for that type of surface. If you're dealing with a mini that has a lot of things like scale work, feather work, chain mail, the rougher textures, it's you can still use a cheaper brush and that way if that cheaper brush looks like heck when you're done, just chuck it. Uh, another thing you can get for when you're painting specifically minis, it's uh, the master, I forget the whole name, of it, but it's this nice little cake of soap. I think it's like master brush something or other. I can always put it onto this, yeah. It does a beautiful job of cleaning your brush and then what I do is I'll rinse it off and I'll do like a thin layer on top of the brush and reshape the brush and let it dry that way because it'll condition the brush for you in between your uses. Um, but I mean, quite frankly, you don't have to go super expensive and buy a $15 paintbrush, especially when you're first getting started or if this isn't something where you're looking to enter competitions. <laughs> if you're looking to get your minis painted onto your table, really there are any range where it's like, you know, $3.99 a pack up to you know, a pack of 10 for 12 bucks is perfectly fine. They're going to serve the same purpose as the more expensive brushes. If it's something where you're gonna do a lot more detail work, you wanna make sure it's really fine tip and everything like that, then yeah, put the money into getting more expensive brands of brushes. 
Because I have some minis that need to be assembled. Did okay. you paint them before assembling or after? After. Um, what's going to happen if you paint before and then you try and put it together? A lot of times the glues you're going to use will eat away at the paint or they'll cause the paint to chip and flake in that section or you might realize that you have to fill in the gap. It's much harder to fill in the gap after something's been painted. So you do want to assemble your mini first and that way if you see anything like there are uh, gaps in between the joints you can fix that up very easily. You can use things like green stuff. It's a, it's a very small fine joint. Um, green stuff does have liquid green stuff now which some people have used with great success. I haven't personally used it yet because I haven't needed to. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually put super glue into the seam and then sprinkle some baking soda on top of it and quickly brush it off with a cheap brush and that's going to fill in the seam and it's not going to mar the texture of the area but you won't have a gap in between. Uh, you'll probably also have to look into doing things depending on the mini that you have. It's called pinning. Uh, there are some really good channels on YouTube that show you how to do that. But basically it's reinforcing your joint by boring in a hole on one side of the mini, sticking a pin in, super gluing it in, and then doing the same on the other side and you kind of like join the two together using the pin so it's a stronger joint. Um, that, that gets to be a little bit more advanced, but I definitely would not paint separately and try to assemble after the fact because you're going to run into hiccups along the way. Primers? Primers. No, I do have an airbrush. No, assuming. Oh, assuming you have no. Um, <laughs> assuming you have no airbrush, you can still prime them, absolutely. I don't recommend the spray can primers because even though some say, oh, we're great for plastic, you're going to end up with a tacky mess. It's just somehow how they'll react to each other. Uh, I like Vallejo's primers. They're very good, especially if you're going to go into the paintbrush. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're not heavy handed with it because if you go in too thick with your primer, you're going to fill in your details, which then makes it harder to bring up the details when you go in with your paints. Um, so if anything, you could always use airbrush thinner, mix it into your primer a little bit, and then put on a light coating to get it primed. But you always want to make sure with your minis, plastic especially, you wash them and not wash them with a color wash, wash them with warm soap and a little bit of dish detergent to break off the residue that's left over from a special coating they'll put on to make it easier to pop them out of their forms. That certain things are gonna work out a little bit better. Um, oftentimes, I will default more to a gray primer if I'm actually gonna go and do a little bit more. Gray is a little bit more forgiving for both sides of the spectrum. It's easier to work with lighter tones. It's also easier to work with darker tones. So if you know you have a mini you can take your time with, and if you need to add a couple more coats, then by all means, prime in gray. The whites are good for if you're doing a very bright colored vibrant mini, absolutely. Okay. So if you're doing things that are like reds and oranges and light blues and pinks, white. If you're using your darker colors, yeah, you can do the black, but you're gonna find for yourself, you're gonna naturally start feeling what works out best for you and how you prefer to see it. Because everyone's eye is gonna see something different color-wise too, which is another thing to keep in mind. Do you have the Citadel tool? Uh, I don't know. I have, I have like a file and a scalpel. I, I don't know what brand it is. Get, get the Citadel tool. Okay. It is wonderful. Um, it looks like almost like a fish hook on a. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that is lovely. It does a good job of removing those lines. Um, I tend to avoid it if there's like a lot of raised details, like feathers or something, because that can get a little tricky. Yeah. Um, but that one has yet to fail me in terms of removing lines that are close to... It just scrapes right off. The yeah, it lifts right. it off. You, you do a little bit lighter hand, you don't dig in. That's the thing. You don't want to dig in, but it has a very sharp edge to the curvature. And so it just makes it you just gently glide it across and it'll remove that little thing for you. They're about 12 to $15, depending on where you're going. I don't have one of those and that's new to me. I'll be yeah. looking for one, but I found with plastics. Uh, Hobby Lobby carries a set of, and the Hobby section carries a set of little sanding files that are plastic. They're designed to work on plastic. I think they're actually originally designed for plastic car models and stuff. Those work a lot better on plastic figs than your traditional needle files do. Yeah. I tried using those, but I felt like it was damaging. You're just have to like be, rubbing the line. You back still have to use it carefully. Yeah. You still have to you use light it touch. It's, it's light always touch. a light, gradual touch. Absolutely. And yeah, you're gonna, depending on what it is, you might want to not do it because. Detail. Yeah, if you, you have that. Mold lines are remember three feet away, unless you're doing competitions, unless you're taking super duper pictures. For your purpose, you have three feet away from you. So if it's a mold line that's in a bunch of feathers or scales or that type of thing, 
decide how important it is to you to remove that line. If it's something like it's right in the middle of the cape and you can quickly get it off, just scrape it off and it'll be fine. But that tool has definitely been a godsend. I really do recommend that one. This is why I can't use the right light option on my camera. Everything else will be okay-ish, but my pale self turned into a light flare. Ugh, okay, back back to settings. Decided since we're moving into the holiday season, what am I doing? No, 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 no! Once you are set and ready, I'm babbling. I'm the babbling brook. That will not be a blooper shared. And you won't know what that blooper was because I'm just going to tease you with that. That will not be the blooper shared. <sighs> Thank you.